Hey, what's up guys? Hope you're having a good day. This is probably one of my most degen sessions I've had in a long time. And if you've been following the channel, you know I do a lot of degen stuff. So it's saying something. Anyways, I'm not going to explain anything else. Let's just get into the felt and you guys can see the hands. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, then I hope you enjoy your stay. Think about sticking around. Maybe drop a sub. First hand of the night, well, not technically the first hand for me. I played a few hands and I'm down to about $185. There's a $5 button straddle. I straddled for $10 behind him from the cutoff. And we look down and see the premium 7-4. There's a couple callers for 10. Mill position raises it up to 30. I make the call simply because I know that everyone else is pretty much going to call the button calls, the big blind calls, and then we get back to the under the gun player. Somehow he folds. I don't know how he folds here. I think you have to call with that much money in the mill but what do i know i'm stuck in the session so yeah we'll see what happens flop comes out jack three eight with two hearts we flop uh we we didn't we didn't flop much we didn't flop much but luckily for us there's 130 in the pot and action on the flop checks through so we get a free turn card which actually does improve of us to to a gut shot it's a, it's a five of clubs it's not that big of an improvement but when action checks around again, I think it's time for me to take a stab and try to take this pot down. I'm pretty sure one bet is not going to do it. And I know no matter what the river card is, that I'm going to have to empty the clip. But we have to start here. So I bet $55. Get a few folds. Not going to lie. Works out pretty well. A lot better than I thought it would. Button gets out of the way. Big blind player gets out of the way as well. And then it gets to the middle position player who's feeling a little bit sticky and he decides to throw in some chips and make the call so we will be going heads up to the river like i said i don't care what the river is i'm gonna be blasting off everyone's been way too passive i feel like he's weak and he cannot withstand a bet of a hundred dollars in an all-in on the river hopefully it works but then the river comes out and it's the bink six of clubs. So we just somehow runner runnered into a straight. I don't have to worry about bluffing anymore because now my bluff has become a value bet. I go all in for a hundred dollars and this guy goes into the tank. He is not happy with the line I've taken. And I don't know if you guys can see, but look across the screen. He picks up his cards. He doesn't know what he's going to do. He's kind of flicking them back and forth, banging them on the table. I think he's going to call. I think he's going to fold. He definitely has me confused. I'm not sure what's going to happen. All I know is I am praying for a fold because we have started this session off upside down and this hand could get us back in the black. But I'll tell you guys what, believe it or not, only 21.5% of you guys are sub. 78.5 are not. So if you enjoy the content, you like what's happening here, do me a favor, drop a sub. I appreciate all the views. That's amazing. But let's get that sub count up a little bit more and I will be eternally grateful and you will have a run good on the felt. All right, that's out of the way. Let's get back to the, can the hand. He is still in the tank, but eventually he does come to a conclusion. He's, he's talking to me. There's a little bit of table talk. He's like, I just don't believe you have it. I don't, I don't think you, you got it. And he puts the money in the middle, makes the call. I let him know that I have a straight and we are good scooping in this $440 pot. He had pocket tens, didn't put me on a jack or two pair. I respect him. He went with his read. Unfortunately, he was wrong. But if I didn't hit, he would have won the pot. 440 coming our way on to the next hand. All right, guys, for the next hand, we are on the button trial for $5. We actually upgrade from 7.4 to 7.5. So as you can see, I am playing much better and our hands are improving. This is a basically peak poker play. You want to keep playing better cards than the last cards you play. That way they can never know what you have. Action goes round. Everyone likes a $5, you know, pot or pre-flop or whatever it is basically everyone calls we go seven handed to the flop seven ways and uh yeah i have five seven improvement from seven four so you know what could go wrong flop comes out six four nine we flop open-ended let's go fist pumping that's what i'm talking about didn't flop a pair but we did flop a straight draw under the gun bets ten dollars the middle position player counts out some chips and then decides he's just going to make the call. So he throws in the $10 as well. Folds back around to me. 
open-ended. I don't see any reason to do anything other than call. I'm not going to raise. I'm not going to do anything crazy. We're not that degen yet. So I put in the $10 and I make the call hoping to see a very nice turn. But this is when the hand goes off the rails. Yep. Big blind player does a little check raisy daisy up to 80 bucks. That's a pretty hefty check raise. I've got to be honest with you guys. It's, it's quite a bit of money. And what's surprising is when it gets to the under the gun player, he decides that 80 is nothing. He's gotten that in his sock. He puts in the call and then gets a middle position player. And he's waiting for a little bit. He was the one that was kind of grabbing chips before, thinking he may want to raise, he may not. Now that this action's in there, maybe that'll slow him down. Maybe that'll change his mind. He counts out some chips, doesn't slow him down. He announces all in. Yep, 140. And I'm gonna speed this up because I go into the tank. I only have $15 invested. This is a 100% fold. But as I told you in the beginning, it is time to degen it up. So I make the call for 140, knowing that the players behind me are gonna make the call. And they do, you know, shocker. They make the call. The big blind who raised tries to go all in. And then the under the gun player tries to go all in as well. I will speed this up for you guys also because this is when I get very petty. They only have like 40 and like 30 bucks. But I was like, hey, 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 they can't they can't go all in. It's it's locked. Because the original raise was $70, so it's $10 to 80, which is a $70 raise. And then it went up to 140. It would have to be 150 to open up the pot again for them to be able to go all in. So I knew I didn't want to see a whole bunch of bad turns, like any club or anything like that, I didn't want to see. So I was like, no, 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 they can't go all in for that extra 40 and you know, 30 bucks, whatever it is. So the dealer's like, oh, you're right, it is locked. Y'all, y'all can't. You have to keep that money behind because I was like, all right, if a bad turn comes, I'm just going to fold. You know, I'm going to be disciplined, save myself 40 bucks, seven of clubs on the turn. Yep, that's that's one of the cards that I definitely want to fold on. Played it perfect, boys. Kept 40 bucks in my pocket, losing the bare minimum. Goes all in for 30. Under the gun goes all in for 40. And ya boy saved 40 bucks because I was disciplined, because I knew how much the pot was, I knew how much the raises were, and I knew that they couldn't go all in. That is right, that's why you wanna stay on top of the poker, know what's going on, know the numbers, so you can save yourself 40 bucks. This is what separates the good from the bad players. When you see that seven of clubs on the turn and you know you're dead, Put that money in your pocket. Go buy yourself some breakfast. Go buy yourself some lunch. Get a tank full of gas. Whatever it is you want to do, you got 40 extra bucks that you saved. Congratulations. You learned it here first at Marcus Royal Poker. Yep. So I fold and we move on to the next hand, which is a very interesting hand, I might say. Why Why have we not cut to the next hand? What's, what's going on? Oh, oh, I call. Oh, so I made all that noise and slowed down the game because I was going to fold on any club turn. And then a club turn comes in. I made, oh, yeah. Okay. That that makes sense. Mm hmm. All right. Well, you know, maybe we can hit and king of spades. Yep. Uh, pair of sevens may be good here, guys. Oh, oh. Big blind had set of nines. Okay. I mean, that, that does beat me. Uh, yeah, yeah. No big deal. No big deal. What's under the gun have? Oh, he has a set of fours. Well, that's still good for the outside pot, so seven of clubs didn't kill me. Uh, the main pot does go to the middle position player. He hit the flush on the turn. And GG, actually on to the next hand this time. All right, guys. Next hand is going to be a double board PLO bomb pot. Look down and see 955 queen, double suited on the fives. I mean, I guess that's something. Flops come out, eight, five, king with two diamonds up top, king, queen, 10 with two spades down below. So we have a set up top and we have a nine high flush draw down below. All in all, pretty decent hand. I decide to check since I'm first to act. Action does check around until it gets to the button player. He does not want to check. He bets pot, which is $30. At this point, I think I have one of two options. Folding is not one of them. I can either pot it again to isolate, or I can just call. Considering there's already a straight on bottom and I'm just drawing, and I have bottom set up top with a lot of stuff to fade. I mean, there's straight draws, flush draws, things like that. I decided to go the more passive route and just make the call. 
uh, under the gun makes a call, mill position makes a call, and cutoff makes a call as well. So we'll be going five ways to these two turn cards. And the turn cards aren't too bad. They're not the best, but they're not the worst either. Eight of clubs up top and four spades down below. So we do boat up on the top board and we hit a nine high flush on the bottom. Under the gun goes all in for 170. The problem with my hand is I have the weakest boat and the weakest flush basically. So yes, I have a boat and yes, I have a flush, but it's still extremely vulnerable and hard to scoop. Definitely not scooping probably. Uh, it's even hard to get half the pot, especially when the button goes all in for 150. I don't know what to do, so I just make the call for 170. I have a boat and a flush. I'm probably beat on both boards, but this is just one of those hands where sometimes you get beat. And maybe somehow I'm scooping. I don't know. Maybe someone's overvaluing a straight. 630 in the main pot, $40 to fight for on the side. Not really to fight for because everybody's all in, except for me because I had everyone covered. But we will be going to two rivers, and hopefully I will be good. Uh, dealer gets the pots right. I am praying to the poker gods that I am good. And if I'm not good, maybe I can hit a five to be good up top for quads. Camera having trouble focusing. Rivers come out, jack of diamonds, four of clubs on bottom. Doesn't really change anything for me other than if my flush was good on bottom, now I lose to a boat. But that's kind of where my hand is. The under the gun player has eight five, so he has a larger boat for me. We have the outside pot for 40 bucks, but my flush beats him on bottom, so we chop up the $40. And then the button player has the ace high flush on bottom, so they chop up the main pot for $630. I get basically a $20 rebate, a woohoo, and we are moving on to the next hand. All right, guys, so we are on to the next hand. That one was a little bit of a cooler. Wasn't too much degeneracy on it, I suppose. Just kind of sometimes happens. PLO hand right here, not double board Omaha, just a regular PLO hand. I have ace, eight, eight, deuce with three spades in my hand, the ace being one of them. So we are suited for a nut flush draw. I raise it up to $15. I only have $80 in my stack and I'm a little tilted from all of the bad play I've been doing in all of the previous hands. Cutoff makes the call, big blind makes the call, under the gun makes the call, and it gets back to the mill position player who decides it is time to raise it up. He pots it, makes it $100. Yep, yep, uh, I'm, I'm all in. I'm all in for 80 guys, okay? I'm going to speed this part up because the cutoff player took so long to decide what he wanted to do. I, I don't know. I, it was a big bet, but he normally doesn't take this long. So it's a little, it, it was out of the ordinary. So, eh, but, you know, it's his money. Take your time. Under the gun makes a call and they are going heads up. I am in for the main and they have a side pot currently of 40 whole dollars. They have money left so they can bet and build it up. I'm not gonna keep up with the action though because I don't care, that's not my pot, doesn't affect me. If you guys want to, feel free though. You know, it's your life, do what you wanna do. Be like, hey, they had a million dollar side pot, that's pretty interesting, all right, cool. I just care about the main because that's what I'm in for and I evidently don't like money because I went all in with this hand. Yep, I just, just don't like money. And I'm a bad poker player. Flop comes out, 5, 3, 10. We flopped a runner, runner, flush draw. Um, we also have a gut shot. You know, four gives us a straight. So there's hope. There's hope. Fingers crossed. Maybe we win. Check, check. No action on the side. That's good to know. Eight of hearts on the freaking turn. What? We have a set? Check, check. Oh, we're good, boys. We're good. King of hearts on the river. Check, check. Our set of eights is definitely going to be good with all this action. I have no idea what they have. Uh, if you want, you can look and try and decipher it. I don't really care. It doesn't affect me. I'm recording someone else's chips because I'm bad at recording. Trying to show my set of eights, the winning hand, taking down $270, trying to get back to even, and on to the next hand. All right, guys, for next hand, we actually see a playable hand in poker. Okay, pocket tens, not bad. Mill position, raise it up to $10. Pretty standard so far, I know. Not, not a... Uh, not like the rest of the vlog, huh? I told you guys, it was a degen vlog. Cutoff makes the call, gets to the button. This guy's like, eh, uh eh, -uh, not $10, not today, boys. He decides to raise it up to 30 bucks. Yep, this is the beginning of the hand going off the rails. Oh, man. There's always got to be one. 
Just so you guys know, I started the hand with around 240 in my entire stack. And spoiler alert, you will see it all going in by the end of the hand. Uh, hopefully we win. Small blind makes the call. Big blind gets out of the way. It's to the under the gun player. He looked like he was about to fold, but he, he's not going to fold. This player does not fold. He is the action player along with myself on the table and a couple other people. I mean, in case you guys can't tell, there is a lot of action on this table tonight. Under the gun makes the call. Action is to me. I decide, you know what? This is a good spot. It's like $90 in dead money. Let me go all in here and try and take it down. Cut off who was only in for $10 says, I don't want to fold. Puts his remaining $85 in the middle. Don't know why you didn't raise. Pre-flop. You just called $2. You have an $85 hand that's worth your entire stack. I guess it makes sense. By trapping. Maybe he has aces. I don't know. All I know is that he's all in with $85. Button player who started the re-raising gets out of the way. He has caused this chaos that we are now finding ourselves currently in. Small blind player is in the tank. He thinks about it for a second, looks at his cards, looks at his chips, decides, you know what? I have a good enough hand to make this make this happen. So he puts his $120 into the middle and we are on the under the gun player. Once again, I have no idea what any of these players have. I actually said because the small blind player looked a little strong beforehand. I say to one of my buddies, obviously not to where people can hear, uh, under the gun calls as well, by the way. So I said that I think the small blind player had jacks and I thought I was behind just based off of playing with him for years and how he was acting. You know, that's that's what I told my friend. That was my read after the hand was all said and done. And hopefully I'm wrong because tens do not have a lot of outs against jacks. In case you guys don't know. I mean, we have like straight possibilities, you know, I and I have two tens. That's it. It's all I got. Maybe flush if my suits are live, I guess. But all in all, it's not too good of shape. Dealer is getting all of the pots right. It is, uh, you know, quite a few side pots here. I think three side pots. Um, so, yeah, it's a lot of work for him. Guys, if you don't know, your dealers when you're at a poker game are very busy and do a lot of work. So do me a favor. Tip them well and give them some respect because it is not easy being a dealer. I can tell you that much. There's a lot of stuff to keep up with, you know, and all they do is get belittled and degraded by players who are running bad or playing bad they blame the dealer for everything don't be that guy don't blame the dealer it's not their fault that you know we play horribly flop comes out and it is ace three seven three on the turn don't like to see the ace got to be honest and four on the river 475 in the main pot 240 on the outside pot between myself and the under the gun player we all flip over our cards. The cutoff actually had ace nine, so he is scooping the main. The outside player, the small blind player, I was right. He has jacks. He has jacks. But I do win the outside from the under the gun player. So I get 240 back, start the hand with 240. Basically a break even. Unfortunate to run into jacks and have a weak ace call, but that's life. Moving on to the next hand. All right, for next hand, we are back to the PLO streets, boys. Look down and see six, nine, ten, five. Double suited for what that's worth. Doesn't really matter when you're trying to get a nine high or ten high flush. It's normally not good in Omaha, so it's not really something to brag about or go chasing. Action does get a few limpy loos. Gets back around to the cutoff player. He uh, looks at his cards and throws in two dollars. He likes he likes the price. Wants to make the call. Button player, however, does not like the price. He says, it's time to bump it up. He, he doesn't sound like that. I don't know why I made him sound like an 80-year-old woman who's been smoking for her entire life. But he raises it to 15. I make the snap call because I you know, I still have some tilt. I still have some degen going on in me. I'm trying to play better. I'm aware of how bad I'm playing this session. Just know that, please. I just can't help myself. The degen in me, that little evil degen on my shoulder, it's like a gremlin. It's like, call call raise go all in and, I, and most of the time i'm like all right chill man like obviously someone fed him after midnight threw some water on him i don't know what happened but he's multiplying he's getting ugly he's getting scary we're getting some calls with this 15 big blind makes the call under the gun mill position all these people were making the call action gets to the cutoff he's throwing in the 15 because once again he does not fold much like myself so we are going was it six seven ways to the flop something like that yeah it's a it's a big bloated pot for a horrible hand like i have flop comes out and it is six deuce king we hit a pair got runner runner flush outs and straights i mean that's something 
So when action checks around to the button player, he goes all in for 60. I'm actually putting this player on aces and my hand against aces, I have a pair, is actually pretty decent. If he has top set, don't get me wrong, that could be a possibility, but I don't think this board really smashes his preflop raising range other than a set of kings. If he has aces, which is, like I said, what I'm putting him on, I am very live against that hand. Live enough to call 60 at least. Well, for me, in DGen mode. I'm sure you can look it up and be like, well, actually, Marcus, you're not getting the proper odds. If you carry the one and then divide by pi, you find out that you are... Yeah, okay, okay, I get it. I'm a DGen. All right, that's what I told you. I don't need a book to tell me how bad I am at poker. I know. I play it almost every day. I get reminded constantly. So I make the call for 60 bucks. My DGen fellow friend over in the cutoff, he's calling for 60 bucks too, because why not? You know, we're in there, like swimwear. Dealer gets a pot, right? 275 in the middle would be a good one to win. Turn comes and it is a beautiful turn. It's a six of diamonds giving us trips. I go all in because I don't have too much behind at this point and I have trips. Not much to say. If someone has king six, they have me beat. If they have pocket deuces, I have outs. If they have pocket kings, I have one out. You see, you see what I'm saying? I'm basically never dead here. Anyways, he makes a fold and it is just myself and the button player. We talk about how many times to go. We go twice, obviously, eight of hearts up top and then the nine of diamonds down below. I let him know that I have a boat on bottom and I have trip sixes up top with the 10. He whips over his cards. He actually did have aces, so this was a horrible run out for him. Uh, you can see it right there. He had some aces with some danglers, eight something. I'm not really sure what they were, but we are scooping this $275 pot and finally heading in the right direction from all this degen play. Let's go on to the next hand and see how I can screw it up. All right, guys, next hand is a double board PLO bomb pot. Look down and see 10, 10, a seven with the ace, 10 of hearts. So we have quite a few opportunities. We have like straight outs, flush outs, boat outs, things like that. Things we can hit on these boards to possibly scoop or at least win one of them. Flop come out and it's not bad on one of them. It is king, queen, jack with two clubs and then eight, ace, three with two clubs as well. So we have the nuts up top with a pair of aces down below. The thing with this is there's four clubs out there. Mill position, I'm sorry, under the gun, betch $20, under the gun plus one, and mill position both make the call. Action gets around to the cutoff. He makes the call as well. Since there are so many draws, I want to juice this up. So that's what I do. Also, four clubs are accounted for, and I have one club in my hand. So if someone's on a flush draw thinking they can scoop, there's a lot less clubs for them to hit. So I raise it up, and I make it 150. Action gets back to the under the gun player. He thinks about it for quite a while. He actually doesn't even know action is on him. We have to let him know. He's like, oh, oh, it's it's on me. Yes, sir. It, in, it is indeed on you. It is your turn to act. You can call, you can fold, you can raise. Those are your three options. You do not have any more. Finally, when he gets the message and realizes it is on him, he opts to go for the most aggressive route. That is right, he raises at this point in time and decides to commit all of his chips into the middle on this bomb pot going all in for $190. Now, the raise isn't that much. The pot's locked up so no one can re-raise. And I mean, this looks extremely strong. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. It does isolate, so maybe this is what I want. The only problem is if he has ace 10 and I block two of the 10. So that's another reason why I potted because I don't really have much on the bottom board, but since I have two of the 10s, it's less likely I'm chopping with a nut straight up top. And those things all factor into, you know, what I'm going to do and why I potted when it got to me. Cutoff makes the call. Also, me being in last position on the button is a good place to pot it because you can make it the most possible. And of course, I make the call for $40 more, 660 in the middle. And we're going heads up because everyone else has folded to these turns. Now, I want to know what you guys do because when these turns come out, it's a five of spades and three of spades. I've pretty much just kind of given up. I don't think I'm scooping, so I check it. I don't think my ace 10 is good on bottom. Nine of hearts up top, four of diamonds down below. I have the nuts up top, but I, I just think I'm chopping. So we go check, check. I flip over my hand. Me and under the gun player actually end up chopping. He had a set of, I, I believe it was eights, and he ends up boating up eights full of threes. 
So he's taking the bottom and I'm taking the top with the nut straight. No one else had the nut straight, so I am not chopping. The cutoff player, I'm not sure what he had and I'm not sure if he calls a bet. He didn't have too much behind. He had like 200 behind or something. So that's why I didn't go all in on the turn. I don't know if that's the right or wrong move. I was just, once again, in my head thinking we were gonna chop so it didn't matter, but maybe I scooped because he did say he was on a club draw. So he was on a club draw for both, both boards and brick both boards. So maybe I lost on some value, I'm not really sure. But either way, chopping up 660, heading in the right direction and moving on to the next hand. All right, we're building some momentum here. Look down from a $5 button straddle, see ace queen offsuit. We get a few callers before the mill position. Player goes all in for his remaining $70. At this point, I think it's best to isolate. So I decided to go all in over the top of him. Everyone else does fold and we get it heads up, which is what we wanted here. I put out all my chips just, you know, for the sake of show. Like, all right, this is what I'm doing. But everyone does fold. We get it heads up and this gentleman likes to go once. So we will be going once, no running it twice for him. And hopefully we are ahead and hold. And if we're not ahead, hopefully we hit $160 in the middle and this would definitely help the comeback trail that we have started to be on because it has been a rough night of crazy gambling and finally we get a premium hand he shows a jack he's not showing us the other card that's fine with me 10 10 four is on the flop with two spades deuce of clubs comes on the turn followed by the eight of spades he lets us know our ace high is good and we're scooping in this 160 dollar pot not a huge one, but a step in the right direction. Now let's move on to the next hand. All right, guys, we find our way back to a double board Omaha. And this time we see ace, deuce, 10, jack, ace, deuce being suited. So once again, a lot of possibilities for this hand to be able to scoop. Queen, 10, nine with two spades is up top. Ace, four, deuce with two diamonds is down below. So up top, we flop a gut shot to Broadway. We flop the nut flush draw and we flop a pair of tens. Down below, we have two pair, aces and deuces. So when action checks to me, I'm gonna bet the size of the pot, which is $30. I feel like this hand is strong enough to withstand a re-raise and we're only six handed to this one. So it's less likely that two people have the nuts on each board. Yes, I know there's a straight possibility on each board, but we have outs on each board to either one of those. And if someone pots, I can just smooth call and see a couple turns. Luckily, we don't run into that because the button makes the call and then action folds around to the big blind player who tags along and makes the call as well. As soon as a small blind player folds, which he eventually does. I know because I was there. And any day now. There you go. See, told you, told you. Should have put some money on that. I would have won that bet. Like I said, big blind player flicks in some chips and we're going three ways to a couple of turns. 120 in the middle, it would be nice to win this because once again, it's been a crazy night and I need to head in the right direction. The turns come out and they really aren't the best. <laughs> Three of diamonds up top, eight of diamonds down below. So it does bring in the flush. I check because these are just not good turns for me. Rivers come out when the action checks through. Five of spades up top and nine of clubs down below. So we do hit the nuts up top, which is nice. And we still have that two pair down below, which may be good enough to scoop. All I know is when action is checked to me, I have the nuts on one board. So I will be betting pot to hopefully either push out, you know, maybe trips on bottom, maybe a straight on bottom that's slow played and is afraid of the flush. I don't know. All I know is I'm gonna bet pot because I have the nuts on one board. So either I want both of these people to call or I want both of them to fold or maybe someone to call and I scoot possibly. I don't know. 120 is the bet I decide to land on though. That's all you need to know at the end of the day. And we're waiting on the button player to act. He is looking at his cards. He's hemming and hawing, doesn't really know what he wants to do, but eventually he does make a decision. And that decision, is to put some chips in the middle and to make the call. So that's what he does. He puts 120 in the middle and now we're to the big blind player. At this point, I'm just like, all right, great. Well, I'm probably chopping with him because he probably has bottom. So hopefully this big blind player calls, that way we can at least chop up his money and we can each make a little bit because at this point there's only, you know, an extra like $30 from him in the money that was in the middle, which was $30 in total. So 
we're not really chopping up too much. There's not much meat on the bone is what I'm trying to get to. So in order for there to be meat on the bone, we need the big blind player to call so we can each make a little bit of cheddar cheese, just a little bit, you know? just enough to make it satisfying but he does not apply she ends up folding i let the player know i have the ace high flush up top and i have two pair on bottom now luckily for us he actually had the king high flush up top and he just has a pair of kings on bottom so we will be scooping this 360 dollar pot and i could have not planned this any better that's definitely putting us into the black and heading into the right direction onto the next hand all right guys, next hand is gonna be a pot limit Omaha hand. I know there's been quite a few of these and double board bomb pots and some of you don't like them, but all I can do is give you the hands that I think are, you know, of importance for the vlogs and this is kind of what the night was. So if you don't like these hands, I apologize. I mainly try and do hold them because that's the game I play, but this game has bomb pots and it has uh, reverse button where there's a hand to Omaha every round and I just happen to be in hands this time quite a bit anyways I raise up to ten dollars get a few callers there's four of us in there 45 in the middle flop is six three queen rainbow I hit a queen hijack bets fifteen dollars button makes the call the big blind player who is the other player in the hand ends up throwing in some chips and making the call as well and I have a queen I have backdoor hearts I have backdoor straight outs for fifteen dollars yeah I float and see one more, you know, what, what's the harm? What's the worst that could happen? So 15 going into the middle, 105 in there. And the river actually does improve us. It is the five of hearts giving us the nut flush draw. Still no reason for me to bet though. So I'm going to check this one. It goes to the hijack player. She continues betting just like she did previously. So she puts the exact same amount out into a $105 pot. She bets $15 and I may have folded for a larger bet, just depending if she like potted it, maybe I fold, but for $15, I don't see any world that I can fold the nut flush draw. So when the big blind player makes a call, I'm absolutely putting 15 more dollars in here to try and hit this flush. And for all I know, another queen is good, or maybe an ace is good. I don't know, maybe two pairs fine, but I don't have to worry about any of that when the nine of hearts comes on the river actions on me i bet a hundred dollars and she is going oh good golly what's happened now she's a super sweet lady love playing with her um but she does not like this bet <laughs> she she was not happy that i bet it all she asked how much the bet is you know the dealer let her know and i both we both let her know it's a hundred dollars she kind of hems and haws for a little bit and yeah, she was. She's like, why? Why did you bet? I was like, well, you know, I hit the river. It's a good river for me. She's like, why well, hit the river too? I was like, oh, well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I, if you hit the river, I'm pretty sure I hit it harder. So eventually, she does announce that she is going to make the call. That brings this pot from $150 all the way up to $350, and we have the nuts, so we are not losing this hand. Gooping in $350, she throws her cards in disgust. She actually had the uh, King High Flush, so she had the second nuts here. No way she can fold that, just a very cooler situation. She was unfortunate to be on the losing end of it, but 350 coming our way. Now let's move on to the last and final hand of the night. All right, guys, so the final hand of the night, I have $5 on the button. We look down and see a suited Ace-3 very good hand very good hand and a hand I like to have some fun with you know with ace three you can do you know you can do some fun things and you're about to see some of those fun things in this hand right now action goes around we get a couple callers until it gets to the under the gun player he makes the call mill position raise it up to 20 action gets back to me and i think ace three is one of those hands suited that you can mix up. Sometimes I can call here. Sometimes I can re-raise. I think folding's kind of out of the option. So I decide to get a little get a little crazy this time and raise it up to $65. I think this is fine, especially given my position on the table. I think when you have position, you're on the button. This is an absolutely okay move to make. Action gets back to the under the gun player. He goes all in for 108. So whoops. Uh guess I guess I stepped in it this time, boys. Hey. I mean, it's not that much more, so I really can't fold, but we are waiting on the mill position player to act. He can either re-raise if he would like, because he was the original raiser, and the pot's open for him. It's not open for me. 
or he can call or he can fold. Those are his three options. And I'm praying he just makes a call because if he rips it all in over the top, I put 65 in here and I've just got to set it on fire and say, bon voyage. This is not my hand. This was not the move. It did not work this time, but that doesn't mean it's not going to work in the future other times. Luckily for us, he just makes a call. I make the call as well. So we're going three ways to this flop with one person all in. So heads up for action on a side pot and hopefully we can get lucky and hit. That's what I'm hoping for. Please dealer, let me, I don't even know what I need at this point because the under the gun player just limped for the $5 and then he shipped it all in for 108. So I don't know if he has a monster or if he's just tired and wants to gamble, gamble. I don't know what's happening. So I don't know if an ace is good, but I do know if clubs come out, I'll be perfectly fine. So really what we're looking for are clubs on this flop or maybe a few threes. Flop comes out, it is deuce eight four with one club. I mean, we flopped a gutter. It's not bad. Action goes check, check. That's pretty good. I'll take that. Come on, five ball. Deuce. All right, deuce of hearts. I mean, maybe we'll chop with an ace if the board bears. Seven of hearts on the river. It goes check, check. I announce I have ace high, and somehow it is good enough to scoop this pot. I think we're up against king, queen, and like king, jack, or something like that, but 325 coming to my way. I will not complain. Let's go to the outro to see how we did. All right, guys, so we're in the game for 600. I ended up climbing back from just crazy donkiness, crazy plays, and actually ended up catching out a 1,000. So not a huge profit, but 400 profit on the night for how I played and how everything went. I'm not gonna be mad at that. I'll take the 400 cheese. Appreciate you guys watching. If you are new here, do me a favor, drop a sub. If you've been here before, welcome back, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.